Good morning, folks. For days, we've discussed the power of this southern coronal hole. It's negatively polarized. Because coronal hole streams are so fast, they catch up to slower solar wind out ahead of them and bunch it up like snow on the blade of a shovel. We call it the leading density spike of a coronal hole stream, and we have a major one there. Speed ramp crested over 800 kilometers per second last night. It's a major stream that surged Earth energy and took a big whack at the electron flux. We entered a geomagnetic storm that has waned a bit this morning. Don't forget, the next coronal hole has crested the northeastern limb. This one is positively polarized. So over the last few days, we indeed got our solar uptick, peaking at M6, but it's died down a bit because the Earth-facing spots are departing or losing steam. However, as of yesterday, there were no sunspots trailing that central umbra. Overnight, a new group was born, announcing his arrival with nano flares flashing. It's a traditional spreader, already has beta-class magnetics. We're also seeing some new spots crest over the limb now. Top eruption threat today it's actually filamentary, that thin rope coming in behind the coronal hole. As you will remember, this time is supposed to see upticks in flaring and earthquakes, but until yesterday the latter was somewhat absent. Then Panama began shaking, 6.0. After that, one rang into 6 range in China, got downgraded, but I don't think that matters to the person who died in that event. The Banda Sea in Indonesia notched another one on the list a few hours later, and then just after that, uptick confirmed. 6.8 in between Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. I'd like to draw attention to an article from Dr. Tony Phillips at spaceweather.com. Our special November video at suspiciousobservers.org was about this very same space radiation. This is another confirmation that it is not only increasing, but this is happening due to the imminent solar shutdown that will present a grand minimum over the next 30 to 70 years, and potentially make the colder aspects of climate change into the most concerning aspects of all. I'll also share a great article on stubborn science and the need to open our minds to something other than the mainstream. I know I'm preaching to the choir on that one here on YouTube. We also discussed this a good bit on Fly on the Wall yesterday in support of Robitaille. Got a link to the change in Nebraska scenery post-harvest here. NASA's Earth Observatory also has long-duration global maps that show how these cycles season in and season out. Goodness gracious, Great Wall of China. Folks, the freakishly cold and snowy U.S. November is visiting China right now, partially due to the super typhoon pulling down on its western edge and partially due to a little polar vortex action of their own. Speaking of the typhoon, it's battering the Philippines. More than 1% of the entire country's population had to evacuate. In case you are wondering, that is not the ground. That's the water from the storm surge. The storm will now cross the country, head towards Vietnam over the next few days. The North American wind map situation is a tale of highs and lows. They always reinforce a drive between them, and the high usually feeds the low. These are paired up like pigeons. The strongest one, though, is at the west coast, driving so much heat northward that it's warmer in parts of Alaska than it is in the southern Midwest states. That's fun. Be sure to check your local forecasts, especially in the freezing rain zones. In Europe, the primary concern is that large cloud line still sweeping southeast towards the body of land. This is a beautiful double earth spot driving where two lows are stuck together and reinforced by two highs just to their southwest. Their convergence line is indeed that cloud line we just saw. Top watch down under is a convergence line popping storms offshore and cresting back. That's the line off the low pressure system that hooks back north and is heading for New Zealand now. Mercury conjoins the sun. Solar and earthquake upticks have taken place. Let's hope for a calmer second half of the watch periods. You're watching Shots of Our Star to Close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.